The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory, Chapter 21, The Eagle. Mosquitoes were so bothersome along Paiupa, with Shockey's band traveled through a westward canyon to the eastern foothills of the Tetons. For the hot month of August, they camped near a stream rippling with trout and, baked with willow and banked with willows, moose grazed in the soggy meadows nearby. Jimmy continued to pretend that he was president of the Jimmy Spoon Club and that his unknowing friends were members. He liked hunting with Nampa and Gamu. One morning, their arrows brought down seven white-tailed deer. Now I shall sew you warm clothes, old mother told him when he brought her some hides. In two moons, there will be snows. Even though the weeks passed peacefully, scouts were always watching. Sometimes the wind played tricks by blowing dust, making it appear that enemies were approaching. Washaki rode with Jimmy through the valley. When I was ten winters, the Shoshone and Sioux fought here. So many were killed. So many. Washaki sat tall on his horse as he surveyed the basin. A breeze blew wisps of gray hair around his face. Are we staying here for the winter? Jimmy asked. The snows will be too deep, Dawi. When the Bajono are fat, we'll take the meat we need and follow the antelope, he pointed west. A smile lifted the chief's face. There are fish there that measure as long as you. They swim up river instead of down. Jimmy felt like a real Indian now, and his hair was long enough to braid. Old Mother gave him thin strips of red wool edged in white to wrap around each end. When Washaki told him he was ready for an eagle feather, Jimmy was thrilled but also worried. He had seen the sharp talons and mighty wings. Would he have to catch it himself? The eagle carries messages from the great spirit. Because of this, its feathers are sacred. We are close to our creator when we greet sun, when we greet each sun with prayer, when we end each sun with prayer, and when we wear the feather of our brother eagle. Washaki looked at Jimmy with affection. It is a great honor to take a feather without harming the bird. Are you ready for such an honor, Dawi? Are you are ready for such an honor, Dawi? Before the next sunrise, Nampa and Gamu rode with Jimmy into the foothills, a buffalo robe tied behind each saddle, a bow and quiver each. When they reached a plateau, Nampa stopped. High above, they could hear the familiar cry, Cree! Long ago, our grandfathers were friends with the Teton Sioux, Nampa said. They learned the Sioux way of catching an eagle. Both Nampa and Gamu had a narrow braid at each temple, adorned with beads and brass tubing. Their pompadours were greased into a thicker braid that lay down their backs. Jimmy's hair fell loose below his shoulders. They dismounted and led their horses to a shallow stream. Jimmy followed the boy's directions and began digging in the soft earth with his hands. When there was a pit large enough for him to crouch in, he stopped. Now fresh meat, Nampa said no more. The sun was hot against Jimmy's back as he hunted, his shirt tied around his waist. His arrows hit a young mule deer that had paused at the edge of a pond to drink. Gamu nodded his approval when Jimmy returned and began cutting away the hide. He showed Jimmy how to line the pit with his buffalo robe, then how to sit, knees up, and arms ready. Then Nampa spread branches over the top, leaving an opening in the center small enough for Jimmy's head. Onto the branches, he dropped a chunk of raw deer meat. <clears throat> Do not sleep, Dowie. Jimmy was alone. It was cool in the pit. He could smell the meat and hear the flies buzzing in the sun. It grew dark. He ate some service berries from the pouch looped over his belt. As the hours passed, Jimmy became drowsy. He sat as straight as he could without bumping the camouflage above him. But still, he had trouble staying awake. He wanted to stretch out to relieve himself. Oh, to sleep. How he wanted to close his eyes just for a minute. Getting an eagle feather now seemed silly. Maybe he should earn his feather by touching an enemy instead. He hadn't felt so miserable since his raw legs more than a year ago. He gazed up through a crack in the branches at a black sky pricked with stars. Every time he started to count them, his eyes grew heavy and his head dropped to his shoulder. Then it was dawn. Had he slept? Had he missed the bird? He felt for the meat and was heartened when he found it still there, frigid from the cold night. As the sun rose in the sky, Jimmy yearned to climb from the hole. Every muscle in his back, legs, and neck ached to be stretched. Finally, he heard the cry, muffled at first, but coming closer. Jimmy's heart pounded as he tried to remember everything the boys had told him. There would be one chance, 
One chance only. A shadow swooped overhead. Slowly, Jimmy raised his hands, ready. A thud above scattered loose twigs onto his face, and he shook them away. The eagle had landed on the meat. Jimmy thrust his right hand under the bird, fingers splayed so he could grab the legs. The bird jumped, but Jimmy held tight. With his left hand, he reached high to grab the scruff of its neck. More branches fell on him, and the bird struggled fiercely. Jimmy's heart raced. His breath came in gasps. The eagle was even bigger than he'd expected and so strong that Jimmy's arms ached. It tried to lift its wings. Now, Jimmy opened his mouth and bit down on the tip of a tail feather. It felt slippery between his teeth, but he clenched them tight. Gently, Jimmy pulled, back, pulled his head back until he felt a small pluck. The feather was out. He opened his hands and the bird flew free. Nampa stepped out, of the tr out from the trees with a smile so broad, Jimmy knew he had done it right. Gamu motioned in a graceful arc, signifying, well done. The backs of Jimmy's hands were bleeding, but he felt no pain. He had a feather, and he had taken it without killing of the bird. And that's the end of chapter 21.